All right, let's talk about weaknesses that a tank has and how to repair it if you get into trouble. So right now this tank is an under, uh, it's in great condition. There's no problems with it. There's um, no issues. But here I have a tank that's hit a, um, an anti-tank mine, which is tracked it. And if I zoom in here, you can see that the track is actually broken. So that's modeled correctly and it's on the right side. So actually that that little mine, AT mine, caused the track to break. And uh, that's common in the war. And it's not a, an issue as far as da immediate danger to the crew. But it is in a way, if you think that if you're able to track a tank, that means that tank can't move which means it can be flanked, people can move up on it and destroy it. So in a way it is very dangerous even though it's not immediately, in, it doesn't immediately injure the crew. Um, they have to take quick action. And what you can do is you could, tank crew used to have spare links on their tank. I think there's one on here. If you look at this tank, the Fury tank, there's some spare tread uh, links it looks to be and so but in this case in the game if you select on the tank and grab a soldier if there's no soldiers inside the tank and you want to repair this tank because it's empty right now nobody's no crew I would have to grab somebody Shut up, and if I either hit the uh, shift R or hit the this button here the little wrench and if I left click on it, that soldier will go and find a kit. And he found one inside the tank, because every tank and vehicle has a repair kit. Some have more than one. So he pulled the kit out of the back of the tank and he's starting to repair it. And if I click the tank itself, you can see that the tread now this red, which indicates the broken track. and. The, it could be a broken turret, it could be a broken gun proper, it could be a broken engine, whatever component will flash. And a, a tank can have four or five different broken components and still be fixable. And so if there were several issues with the tank, maybe the engine needed to be fixed, maybe both tracks were broken, or the main gun, I could select more soldiers. I, I think I know at least two soldiers can repair at the same time. As long as there's repair kits, you need you would need two repair kits and two soldiers to be repairing multiple damage at the same time so he, he'll continue to repair on the tanks uh, card you will see a little repair um, for some reason it's not showing up here because this tank isn't showing up because it may not be on the right side if I select this tank here which is our jumbo tank you'll see a little repair wrench on the actual vehicle car and then when it's completed you get that audio uh, message saying video repaired a little message so he's repaired the vehicle if I if there were crew members inside the tank you simply would have to select the tank and hit the R key if it needed to be repaired but it's been repaired so multiple ways to get the job done you can select a soldier to go run uh, and repair by hitting the R key shift R or you can hit the repair button and if you select a tank that's damaged multiple damages um, you can just hit that wrench and they will pop out of the tank itself and automatically start repairing just by hitting the that wrench button. So it's like an auto repair. Now there'll be times when you um, you send the soldier over to repair a tank. You hit that wrench, you grab a soldier, hit the wrench button, say go repair that. And he goes in a different direction and, and you say to yourself, what what the hell is that? Well, he's actually, that means that that tank or that soldier doesn't have a repair kit handy. 
So the AI will actually on its own go look for a repair kit that's close by and that may be by a destroyed tank a couple meters away. It may be a different tank or vehicle. He may f see a supply truck and go get a repair kit out of the truck. So he'll go in the opposite direction, get that repair kit, and then he'll go over to the tank and start to repair. So the AI is pretty good as far as repairing in the game. And you have good indicators of when it's repaired and which um, tank is being repaired or not. And for some reason now that card has shown up, it may be just a little glitch, but now when I selected this tank now, its card showed up. And if it was repairing, the card itself would have a little wrench, little icon next to the card blinking, saying that's being repaired. And why that's important is, if you have a battlefield with, you know, 50, 60 different vehicles out on the field, you may not remember or know which one needs to be fixed. And simply by looking at all your cards here on the left, which you can pull them in and out, and you'll have a list of all your tanks. And um, these cards will show up and they'll show you which ones need to be repaired. So you can just go from one to the other. You can double click and the camera will actually go there also. So you can just quickly go and double click and you'll see the one that needs to be repaired by the little icon. Then you can hit the R button if there's people in it and they'll start to repair. Then you can move back and go about your business. So those side cards are very important and also the mini map which we will have a video on the mini map and a, a multitude of different information on this simple little map all right so there are dangers and you can repair them even if you get hit um, unless it's a catastrophic explosion which completely wipes you out there are ways to repair your vehicles and some of the dangers can be um, an AT rifle. Um, you could have a soldier with uh, a bazooka. Yes, he could sneak up to a tank and completely destroy that tank or disable it with simple a simple shot by him crawling Check up to a tank German and um, hitting the the treads or whatnot, and that's a danger. You can have a soldier run up behind it, throw a Molotov cocktail into the engine vents back here, these vents, and that could cause a fire which will stop your tank and have an engine failure. Um, you can drive over a mine, which this tank did. He drove over an anti-tank mine that was buried in the soil, and he lost his track. And so it's very, very important um, for the tank commander to have um, spotting and to have a view of the battlefield. All right, so in the next video, we will get into some of the more interesting aspects of the different shells, uh, types of shells, the machine gun fire and um, penetration and how you actually destroy things on the field, in the field. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of how you actually destroy things properly in the battlefield. If I select my tank, which I've switched him now to a side, so I went to, uh, I basically went to F3, I selected my tank and switched it to the green side. And then I went back to F1. And since now our, our tank is on a specific side, when I'm back in F1, I just hit the number two key. I just want to show that in case you try the same thing, you'll wonder why you don't get the pink um, icon or the, the pink highlighting on your vehicles. Um, for you to get this pink highlighting, which I'm going to demonstrate, you have to make sure that your tank is on a specific side. It's not just on the, the gray default side. So now it's, it's looking at this more like a, an actual target to destroy. So first things first, once your tank has picked a side and then other vehicles are killable, one thing the game helps you with is this pink highlighting system. And I'm on the main gun right now, which is um, active right now because this is bright, clear here. 
And so when I zoom to where I'm looking at and I highlight, I move my cursor over different vehicles, different parts of that vehicle highlight. And it's kind of handy because especially when you're starting out, you want to know what you're targeting and the different pieces of that vehicle that can be destroyed. And sometimes you want to disable the wheels, sometimes you want to blow up the entire vehicle. Maybe you just want to blow up the back part of this truck and blow up that fuel. So there are different parts of the uh, vehicles that can be destroyed and targeted. And the game sees them differently. So if I go to this main uh, medium heavily tanked Panther, which has 110 millimeters of armor in front, um, our little Sherman has only got like 63, I believe. So this has a lot of armor up front, so you want to be very specific where you're aiming. And this also has those side plates, I was the shield I was talking about. And the shield can be turned off or on, but you can target the shield and some weapons will just blow the shield off. And then the next round can penetrate into the track. So the, ga the game's very deep as far as your options. Um, and so this highlighting system, I just wanted to show all the different parts of the vehicles that take damage and are modeled in the game. There's the engine component. If that gets attacked, that will cause damage. The engines will stop. The turret, if you hit the turret just right, that will stop, uh, stop it from functioning. And so on and so forth. And even just the gun itself, you can highlight just the gun. And that is a specific part that can be damaged, which means everything else on your tank will be working properly. Just your gun will fail and you won't be able to fire the main gun machine guns and you can still move the tank and rotate and so I wanted to show that every part of the tank is modeled and since we're at it we might as well take a close-up and talk about penetration and armor um, you can see here the thick plates um, in the front and if I go out of direct control or if I go on direct control go out and if I select this tank, but I have to be in a different mode because now I'm back in the base um, in default mode, so I can select this tank. Um, what I'm saying is there's different, there's armor plates on the side and in the front, on top and in the back, and they all have different thicknesses, and that's all modeled in the game. So ideally, the tank was made to fight head-on, and that's where all the heavy thickness of the armor is. And it's also sloped so that a projectile is going to bounce off. If it can't penetrate, if it doesn't have enough energy, kinetic energy to punch through, it's going to, it's going to actually deflect up and over the tank and go flying off into the distance somewhere. And the same with the front mantle part of the tank. It's heavily armored. If you zoom in here, you can see how thick these, these armor plates are in the front. And then the side, you can see it's much thinner, much thinner around the back and the sides. And in the back proper, it's actually usually the thinnest and can be penetrated quite easy. So that's why you always want to move a tank off the battlefield out of danger and make sure it's reversing and not rotating and showing its back because it, it can be killed quite easy. But when it's front on, as you'll see, it can take a lot of, it takes a lot of kinetic energy and a very strong gun to take out a panther at this distance. So having showed you all that about the slope, the thickness, and the range. These all determine how much kinetic energy your shell has to penetrate or not penetrate, if it's going to bounce off, and what it's going to do. So the slope, the range, and um, the type of shell, all these factors come into play 
And that's the great thing about Assault Squad 2 is the dynamics in this game are amazing because of the modeling. You have fall off of the shells. It loses height over distances. It loses energy over distance. And um, the slope of the armor, the thickness, these things are all calculated in. And this makes this game far different than some RTS where you grab a tank, fire another tank, and wait for it to explode. There's a lot more to this game, and that's why it's so replayable. So let's go back into 2, or into the our side here, the green side, using the numeric keypad. All right, so we have our tank selected, and we've seen how the different areas of our targets highlight and can be targeted. Right now I'm going to show you the different types of shells on this tank. There can be up to five, maybe even six different types of shells in a tank, depending on what it's used for and how many guns it has. So in this tank, which is kind of a default tank of the war, many were produced doesn't have that great of armor, the gun isn't that great, but it does have, you know, a lot of guns. It's got a lot of firepower if it's used correctly. Now, the first shell up here, and if you look in our inventory, it tells you actually how many are on board. It's 20, is it 26 or, excuse me, 28 shells of the AP armor piercing 76 millimeter. Underneath that is the um, the heat rounds, which are kind of a green mossy tipped round, which is a high explosive anti-tank round. And below that is uh, an APCR or a high velocity armor piercing round. So number one, the first one, the AP round, APC, armor piercing long range. That's your standard tank shell that has, it's a solid round, no explosive charges inside the round projectile. It's made to fly long and far and very fast and penetrate uh, another tank or vehicle with armor. So it's penetrating, it has penetration value, not explosive value. One below it is the 76 millimeter HE round, heat round, and that is has a slightly smaller range, but it's a high explosive round, which would be used for small lighter targets, um, like a house, like small vehicles, like um, a small um, entrenchment of troops where you want an explosion to do damage and do uh, area damage. And this last one, the pointy one, is a, a solid round. It's a armor piercing round with no explosive, but it fires at a higher velocity, but shorter range. So you use this last round to fire at targets that have super high armor and that your normal AP round can't penetrate. And you're only given about four of these, so use them wisely. And if you're fighting with a tank and you can't penetrate it from the range you're at, try to sneak up, reload to this armor-piercing high-velocity round, and you may be able to penetrate because it's a faster round. So when you reload, you basically click which armament you want, which shell, and as it's reloading, it's, it's uh, the letters of what it is inside the reticule will show up so you can remember what you're loading. Um, but let's take our first shot, and we're most likely, almost for sure, not going to penetrate this panther at this range. But we have an armor-piercing round loaded, and we've got 26 more, 28 more rounds. So we've got plenty of rounds. I'm going to zoom in here and you can see the highlighting but if I go into if I hit the E key and go into direct control 
Now I get more specific information. The pink highlighting is gone. I can see my range number. So as I drag my cursor around and move the turret around, it slowly catches up with my mouse cursor. You can see the range number. If I go way up too high, it turns red. That means it, I cannot fire at targets that far. It's out of range. If I move my turret and cursor closer to the vehicle, I get a green little fuzzy dot. It shows that it's, it's in range. It's on target. There's nothing obstructing my view. The range number is white. And don't pay attention to the 103 number in the red box to the right of the other box. Um, that's in uh, Rob's realism. Um, just stick with the, the one number. In the game by default, it gives a penetration color and number. Uh, Rob's doesn't use that, but um, just ignore that for now. But from experience, you can tell that it's in range. I know that this Panther has 100 millimeters, 110 millimeters of frontal armor, and it's sloped, which means it's going to deflect even easier. And it's at an angle from my tank that is perfect for it to not penetrate because the tank commander parked his Panther in just the right angle, so my shell's going to deflect easily. And that's key here, is how you park, how you attack is key on how much angle and slope protection you can get in your vehicle. So that Panther uh, commander was smart. He's, I can't get a, a really head-on shot. It's going to deflect really easy. So I moved around. I know it's within range. I got the right type of shell loaded, but I'm still going to fail. So let's take a shot. So we get the green fuzzy dot. Um, I'm going to um, shoot right at the front armor. And it failed. It uh, didn't penetrate. If I um, get out of direct control and go to default mode, click on the tank, and you can see there's no damage down here in the lower left. There's no damage it absorbed or was able to withstand that quite easily with the frontal armor. So let's go back and see if we can how we can get a good shot. So we select our tank, we turn on the engine, we wait for our icon to change so it can move. The engine started now, we can move. Now, of course, in a real battle, the Panther would probably destroy our Sherman at this range because it's got a superior gun, you know, gun velocity, and uh, our armament isn't as good at all. But for the sake of demonstration of penetration and slope value, we're going to continue on, and we're going to get closer. And if I go into direct control, I can use use the ASWD keys to move my tank while I'm aiming and firing. I'm going to fire again. Still no success. I'm going to turn the tank. I'm going to aim again, front. Still no penetration. Alright, so now because that front armor is so thick, I'm going to switch to auto direct control, go into here, switch to the pointy little high velocity armor penetration shell. And as it's loading, you can see it's ready to go. Direct control, and I'm going to fire at the front of the tank, but it'll probably still bounce off. But it may penetrate, but see how it bounced off because of that angle. I take another shot at even the turret. Same thing should happen. Ah! I think in this case, if I go to default mode here, it may have caused damage. In fact, I think it did. Let's... What is this?
Okay, yeah, sorry for that. I just somehow got stuck. So in that case, the high uh, velocity uh, round actually penetrated the turret of the Panther, and you can see it messed it up. It's uh, out of commission. So this tank can move. It can, it can escape the battle, but it's, as you see here in the lower left, it's in gun plus the turret is out of commission and it will have to be repaired. So the high velocity round actually could penetrate the top and was able to make, um, to take it out of commission for the battle. Now, I have to go back to this mode to see this because I've been having the um, shroud on so you could see how the view, the viewing with the fog of war. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to hit Alt F. I'm turning off the fog of war so I don't lose my, get confused here. Um, we no longer need to show the, the angles of view. But now that demonstrated that the higher velocity shell actually was able to penetrate and um, the high explosive shell I'm going to just demonstrate now if I move this tank back and it's going to fire on this little Kuba wagon here and I'm I'm going to switch to a regular AP round. Now watch how the armor penetration works on a very light vehicle. It should just go right through this vehicle and continue to move forward. So direct control. I've got the armor, armor piercing round selected. And if I fire, it should go straight through that vehicle. As you see it did. It, The kinetic energy caused some damage here but it was because it was a solid shot it went right through the vehicle and hit the ground and was stopped up further up ground here so now to demonstrate the heat round I select the heat round and you can see the reticle is loading up and now there's an HE in, in the middle of the reticule that means I'm loading up the heat round go in direct control and because this is an explosive round, it's not meant to penetrate through a lot of steel and armor. It's meant to penetrate a little bit to, to explode on contact. So right now, this should cause a full catastrophic explosion of this little vehicle here. And that's exactly what we get. So knowing what round, what you're trying to do, is very important. And if you're trying to destroy light vehicles, you want to make sure you're using the right equipment and the right rounds. In this case, this fuel truck, I could surely destroy it with a high explosive round and it would be a catastrophic explosion at this range, guaranteed. Or I could save those rounds, I could hit my right mouse button, and it'll switch over to a machine gun, a 30 cal, and I can disable it, not wasting one of my more priority rounds. And I can also take out, kill the occupants, and take it out of commission that way. If I wanted to blow up the uh, tank in the back, I could switch machine guns to say the 50 cal, higher caliber, go into the direct control since I have a, a guy that's a full tank crew, there's a guy manning the top 50 cal. See if I can get some penetration. You can see the gas is leaking out of the tank right there. And now if I go out of direct control and that's go to this button here while I have a machine gun. I have different burst modes for machine guns. So right now it's on burst and I'm going to switch it to full auto and which should give me a longer 
go back into direct control. So there's different modes of fire. So I was able to totally destroy this vehicle with simply with machine gun fire. And I'm going to go switch to the coax 30 cal machine gun to show the burst rates. So the fuel ignited from the engine fire and the game is, I mean, it's just uh, really works well in some regards like that. So just to uh, finish explaining, now I've got control of the 30 cal coax gun inside the turret. And burst rate is very short. If I switch, again, go to this button down here, switch the burst rate, it should be a longer burst rate now. And now you get a longer full, full magazine. So there's two modes there. I wanted to show you the machine gun burst rate that you can change. And there's also a different, if I switch the tank, and if I switch, now you change the different machine guns and main gun using these buttons. So we're no longer using the machine gun. We switch, we're going to switch over to the heat round, which is already loaded. And I'm going to demonstrate the uh, different, um, if I go back here, I have also another firing mode, it's called direct or indirect, it's part of the ROBS mod. So right now this tank, I've been demonstrating full front fire, direct fire, which basically fires out of the gun straight forward in a line. If I needed some longer distance uh, howitzer type shells um, to get over a house or some trees, I can set this button on, so I turn that on, you get a message saying your gun's changing and in the next five minutes it's disabled to switch to indirect fire mode. So now I'm on into indirect fire mode and you can't fire and you may wonder why it's not working. Well, you need one more step in this mode. I need to go down here and I need to switch this 76 indirect button here. So I click that on. Now this tank is fully in to indirect fire mode. And if I go into direct control, raise the turret up, it should be able to fire right over in an arc. I zoom out a little bit more so you can see the shell. It should be able to fire in an arc over these trees and house to behind there. And you can see it. I don't know if it's the resolution of your monitor, but it does work. It fired over the house. It will continue to fire as it reloads. And you can see I'm able to actually fire over obstacles. It's not as accurate as direct fire, but it does uh, give you a certain amount of howitzer-like capability. It's very inaccurate, but you can get some mortar-type uh, efficiency out of your capability out of your team. So it's going to fire off a set amount of rounds, like a howitzer would shoot off a certain amount and then you can't move. So let's get out of this mode. So we go up here, turn that off, and get out of direct control. It looks like it shoots four or five rounds. It's going to switch to, in, or to direct fire move the tank. So now we should be get back to direct fire mode and I can now again select armor piercing. So I should also mention in indirect mode you it's only going to use the explosive rounds because penetration rounds aren't useful in, the, in that type of mode. Alright, so in the next video we will end it with uh, some additional information for you tech, tank commanders. I'll be right back. So I thought I'd explain one other feature uh, or one other instance that happens in the game that people wonder why. Um, 
I mentioned that if you use a high explosive round, you'll get an explosion because there's explosive charges in that shell. But people wonder why if they're using a hard solid shot like an AP, uh, AP round, armor piercing round, why sometimes it will cause a catastrophic explosion in a tank or whatever you shot at. And why did it blow up? It's supposed to just penetrate and go through. Well, the reason is um, in the game, if you shoot a tank and it's an armor piercing solid round and you get a violent explosion, it's because that round actually penetrated the tank in an area where the uh, fuel tank is or the ammunition stores are. So in the case where you um, you see a catastrophic explosion but you thought wow it, it shouldn't have exploded that violently it's because it actually penetrated where the explosives in the tank are. So thought I'd mention that as part of the game. All right, so a few other bits and pieces of information for you tank commanders would be that um, I've got a different variant of this Sherman. And this Sherman has a phosphorus round loaded up, so it's a Willy Pete. It's a WP white phosphorus shell, 105 millimeter. And if I go in direct control, it's great for burning out troops that are using buildings for machine gun nests or um, foxholes or any area you want burnt out and it causes a lot of damage. Um, if I was to go into shift F mode that will take me into first person mode so any vehicle you can go to first person mode by hitting shift F and if I was to fire it's within range right shell Willie Pete and I go back out of first person now this should cause quite a fire and anybody who's in the building the trees will be forced to leave as uh, the phosphorus ignites almost anything it touches so that's a way to use fire uh, it's another type of shell that the tank commander um, can use to cause damage and you can see the house slowly starting on fire now the windows are breaking it's starting to ignite and so whoever's inside that building is going to be forced to come out or burn alright so that was the one thing I want to mention that different type of shell that's available only in some tanks in the Rob's mod but it's available in enough tanks that you should be aware of that shell and I also wanted to show you how to go into first person again it's shift F it means any vehicle you're in you can go into first person you can hit the E key go into direct control and you can even be in first person direct control and use the W A S D keys to move and drive your vehicle while you're in first person. There's a few uh, graphical glitches, but if you stop, it'll go back, and I can also fire again. And I can do this while I'm in full control of seeing exactly where my guns are and what I'm shooting at. And once it settles down and reloads, I can hit my right mouse button to change to the machine gun while the rounds are reloading. Now this is a very important aspect of the game. Um, while your main gun is reloading, you can easily switch to one of your machine guns. So let me get out of first person and direct control. So this is something every tank commander needs to know is obviously when you change shells it takes a long time to reload but you can also you can basically say to yourself okay what two weapons on this tank do I want to be able to control really quick and, and go from one to the other really quickly with a mouse click so I can say okay I want the 30 cal coax machine gun 
to be active and or ready and I also want a heat round loaded up and that's how I'm gonna move forward so then I can go into direct control I can use the ASWD keys to move and turn the tank move forward I can fire on a tank such as this one which is the right type for this high explosive shell I can fire on it get a good result right click and also use the machine gun on the, the troops that pop out to try to escape out of the vehicle and then when it's reloaded time has gone past which hasn't quite reloaded yet so I can switch back to the right mouse button it's still active on the battlefield and should be reloaded I can fire immediately right click and start to use the machine gun again so basically your right mouse button goes between the two it selects back and forth between your machine gun you have selected and your round that you have in your main gun so you no longer have to wait for a specific shell so right click boom, shell misses machine gun and like I said before while it's reloading you can also change the burst rate of your vehicles and you can also change the indirect or direct fire mode. So if I'm using my machine gun but I want it to have a burst mode, small burst to save machine gun fire, now it's just firing in small burst. It won't do a long burst so I can conserve. I can right click, go back to my main gun, fire. So that's, and I can also move my tank while I'm doing all of this. And I can also go hit F, shift F, and I can go in first person and even see everything in first person mode to make sure I can see from my tank's point of view to make sure it's not obstructed by trees or terrain. Alright, one other thing, if I go out of shift F, zoom out, one other thing that is kind of special on uh, the Panther tank I thought I just mentioned is this Panther has a special uh, smoke gun tubes like on a modern tank or a more modern tank this actually has smoke uh, gun tubes on it so if you hit the inventory you can see that up here these two smoke guns if I click them make sure they're active and now if I go in direct control it gives me a little grenade. These are smoke grenades, so anywhere around the tank I get the grenade icon, and that's where smoke will pop out. And that's a protective feature of this tank. And so now it's protected by a smoke wall in front. So I just want to show you that on the Panther 5. Uh, it has a protective smoke feature. Just make sure it's active and that you're in direct control then you get that that feature to deploy smoke so commanders that's about it for these videos uh, there's a lot to the game but it's worth the time to get to know how to manage your systems to get the depth of gameplay we're all looking for